So today we will have a look at a few modules that can help you create and build code progressions in VCVREC. We will start from the simplest way and work our way up from there. This video was chosen by my patrons, by the way, so feel free to join our little community there and on the Discord channel. And the first module we will look at is the note sequencer from JW this one here and this is probably the easiest most quickest way you can create code progressions it's perfect for generative codes as well and it can create very interesting results so first of all let's set the number of voices we want so how many notes will be in the codes in this case i will go with four notes so in the right click menu we have polyphony channels i will select four so now we have a four channel polyphonic signal and I will use interzone from Valley in this case, which is also polyphonic. So I will send the pitch information to interzone and the gate output. Although it says gate here, it's actually a trigger. So we send the gate output to the trigger input of interzone. And you can see that interzone is going uh, to one channel of the mixer from Bog Audio. This mixer has an option. You can see it here. Uh, it can spread the polyphonic input to the four channel so i have it spread to the four channels again we have four notes and i have them uh, penned a bit right so now if we go back to the sequencer we can choose a scale as you can see it here we have note octave and scale i will go with f minor right and now we can randomize the grid by clicking this button here right and with the dedicated knob we can select the amount or the density if I take it all the way, it will be just full, right? So let's go with something, something like this maybe. All right. And now let's set this also to four steps, right? So we will have a four uh, step code progression. We'll have four codes and we can trigger it. And I will use a uh, Opelach and I will use a slower clock, every clock divided by 16. So this will trigger. Let's just reset everything quickly. All right, so this will trigger the clock. Let's listen to this for a second. Right, three chords. Let's wait for another one. Right, and we have a basic progression, but of course it can get more interesting by triggering, for example, the rotate function here that will rotate the grid. We have also flip and shift if you want to experiment. I will use a divided by 32 clock to trigger the rotate here. Let's wait for it. Right, so now we get even more chords. Now again, this is the uh, this is simple and intuitive, perfect for experimentation, amazing for generative patches, great for people without a musical background who just want to get some chords in their patches, without the need to actually go chord by chord and enter notes and such. I have here another example. Right, I have here another note sequencer. In this case, I have it running randomly. So under the mode, I chose random. Right, this is uh, sequencing an FM operator, which is also polyphonic. Again, I'm using the mixer. Here there is also some delay. Right, it will sound like this. Right, so we have even more chords. Before I show you another voice that I have here, I just want to mention the big brother of the note sequencer, which is this one here, again from JW. This one has many more um, features, as you can see here. It has also a, a game of life feature, which is quite fun. It has individual outputs, again, polyphony, and monophonic outputs as well. So you can also experiment with it and create even more complex chord progressions. And the last voice I have here is actually an arpeggio. So I'm taking uh, the chords and I'm arpeggiating them. I'm playing one note at a time. 
um, again with the FM operator. I'm using for this the ARP from Bog Audio, which is quite useful for this stuff, and this will sound like this. Another module that is quite easy to use is Progress from Hampton Harmonics. Now here we also don't have to enter notes, but we do have to select the chords. So you will need a bit more musical theory background for this, but it's still very beginner friendly. Now another difference here is that on top of the poly output, we have also individual pitch outputs for each note. Right, so in this case, I have four oscillators from Vult. I have two basal oscillators and two bleak oscillators. I have some modulation with oct. Again, I'm mixing them with a mixer and I have some filtering going on. So let's connect. I will connect one, two. Again, this is the pitch information three and four. And let's unmute this. Right. And already we get a chord. Now we can change the root note. Uh, maybe I will zoom in a bit. We can change the root note here. Up, but down as well. Right, I will leave it at C. We can change also the type, so major, minor, major seventh, and so on. Right, I will go with minor, of course. <laughs> we can change also the inversion. Right. So let's set a three-step sequence. We have eight steps all in all. Let's select three. And now I will use a clock to drive it. I have a clock divided by eight. So this will drive the sequence. So let's also reset everything. And now let's change a step two to be, for example, F minor. Right, F minor. And step three to be G, let's say it F minor seventh actually. Uh, another one. And the third step to be uh, G, I will go down to G and then again minor seventh and change it to be the first inversion. Right, and now with the length control, you can see here we have length. Uh, I can change the length of each step. So we can have, for example, step three playing twice as long. So again, with this sequencer, we have a bit more control over the chords that we'll play, and we can create a, a more complex progression. Right, now because we have the individual outputs, it's much, uh, it's much <laughs> easier uh, just to add a bass to it. So here, for example, I have Psych from Instruo going through a filter and some delay. So if I just use output one as my bass notes, right, it will output more or less always the bass note. Right. Now Hampton harmonics have also a dedicated ARP module. Right, this one here, that works really well with this uh, chord sequencer. So again, I will use it um, to arpeggiate the chords, basically separating them into individual notes, but I have it here set to random, so it will output the notes uh, in a random sequence. So if I use the pitch information, the polyphonic pitch information, all of the four uh, notes to the volt per octave, it will sound like this. OK, 
Okay, another level of complexity above that would be the chord key. From impromptu, here we can enter up to four notes per chord by using the uh, keyboard, and we can sequence the chords with external pitch information or external voltage. Now there's an expander from impromptu called for view that might be useful for seeing the names of the notes. So if you just put it next to uh, the chord key, as you can see, it just has to be close to it. We can see the names of the notes. Right, now also here we have uh, individual outputs, but there's an option to merge them into a polyphonic signal. So in the right-click menu, we have here poly merge outputs into top note, and we can select all of them. Right, so now the upper output will be a four-channel polyphonic output. So in this case, I have here energy from the geodesics, which is again also polyphonic. It's going through a mixer and a delay. For now, the delay is all the way down. So if I send the a pitch information to the volt per octave input and I will unmute it, we have a chord. Right, now before we use also the gate output, let's program a few chords. So I will zoom in a bit. Let's go the first note, the first row, let's go with an F. Right, and again we can see the names here. Then the second one will be a G. Then we will go with a B flat. Um, which will be this one here. Here we can also change in four view. We can change this to sharp or flat. I will change this to flat because we have a B flat and not an A sharp. And then the fourth one will be a D. I just have to bring the octaves up. And then the fourth note will be a D. This will be the first chord. Right now in the right click menu, we can copy this chord, copy chord. I go with the index to the second slot and I can paste it. Right, and now instead of a D, let's go with a C. And instead of a G, let's go with an E flat. Right, so those will be the two chords. We have one and two. Right, and now for sequencing, uh, sequencing this, we can use something like the ADDR sequencer from Bog Audio, which is perfect for stuff like this. Right, let's drive it with a divided clock, every clock divided by four. And also let's reset everything already. Very nice. Now we will have only four steps. Right, and this will go to the CV input, to the index CV input. You can see that it says zero to two volts. This is the range of modulation we need. So now let's leave step one with the first chord, but we will change steps two, three, and four to be the second chord. Right, I'm just moving them a bit. So we have one, two, two, and two. Right, now let's use the gate as well. Right, this will go to the multiply input of energy, which is a sort of a built-in VCA. And for sequencing this, I have here the gate sequencer from impromptu set with four different sequences, and I'm merging them into a polyphonic signal. Again, we are working with polyphony here. So this will go to the gate input of the code key. Right, and we get the chord progression, but with rhythmic variation. Right now I can add some delay to this. Again, the wet was all the way down until now, but I can introduce some delay. Right, so again, this one, the chord key gives you a bit more control, so you can pick the individual notes of each chord. But again, it means also that you will have to know a bit more what you are doing. Um, let's add some drums to this. I have here another gate sequencer from Impromptu, sequencing a few drums from VCV. I'm sending a copy of the drums, a mixed copy of the drums to two different comparators for crushing the sound. <laughs> and the phaser it will sound like this.
And now because we are using a polyphonic um, signal out of the chord key, there's a module we can use to extract the bass note in a musical way. This one is called bass from Sively. This one here, in this case, I have it set to lowest, so it will output the lowest note of uh, the chords. Right, and as the bass, I have the percussive vibration from Life 4 Modular. Right, so I will just use the polyphonic signal to the input of this bass module. Let's have a listen. to show you another way of creating chords and progressions and that's in a more modular way by using a shift register. Basically a shift register will work similarly to how a sample and hold works but the shift register will also shift the sampled signal through its outputs. So when sampling pitch information, we can get a few intervals at once creating a chord. And by the way, if you want to know more about shift registers, sample and hold, and other basic concepts of synthesis in the modular environment, there's a link in the description to a series of videos I created where I go through the different building blocks of modular. So in this case, I'm using a simple sequencer to generate pitch information, and I'm sending the pitch to the shift register Right, and then to four different oscillators, I have two FM operators and two basal oscillators from Volt with some modulation with Oct, mixing them also with some modulation on the level. Right, so with each clock, we get a different result. We get chords from a simple sequencer with one output. Now I want to mention quickly a few more options you might want to check out. There is the commercial module from VCV. Um, chords, again also here you can program chords and sequence them in all sorts of ways. Let me unmute this. I have here just the VC01 going through the VCF. Right, you can uh, advance them with the trigger, you can use CV to sequence the different chords. You can have individual outputs or again a polyphonic output. Right, and of course there is also Foundry from Impromptu. Now this is more of a complex, deep, amazing sequencer, and but you can really easily use it also for chords. You have here the keyboard that you can use to program the different tracks. You have four tracks, so you can program chords without uh, four notes. Right here I'm sequencing the FM operator. Right. And I'm sure that there are other modules available, but this will definitely get you started. And I hope that this video was helpful. And um, thank you for watching and cheers.